Hello, and welcome to this episode of The Weekly Rewind, presented by Attractions Magazine. I'm your host, Theron White, and this week we're going from Monday the 5th to Sunday the 11th. Starting on Monday, Attractions Magazine, along with thousands of other companies, were at the massive U.S. travel-related trade show happening in Washington, D.C. During this convention, they were able to check out the new Adventura Hotel coming to Universal Orlando. Now during this, they got to look at a virtual tour, kind of like the VR style where we get to look left and right and see a little model. Here's a video clip where you can kind of see some of the hotel and what is expected to come to Universal in 2018. Moving on to Tuesday, we got to check out the new 630-foot-tall New York wheel. It will be the tallest Ferris wheel in the entire world upon its completion, and it's going to be right on New York City's Staten Island. To compare sizes, the Orlando Eye is 400 feet tall. So this 631 is going to give amazing views. As I said, be the biggest and tallest one in the entire world. So definitely going to be an amazing spot to check out some views all over New York City. Also on Tuesday, still at the convention, we got to take this look at the massive Disney booth that they had set up. They had looks at everything from Aulani to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout, Disney Springs, Pandora, everything possible. So it was great that people got to go there and have a sit-down meetings and kind of learn more about it. If you were not local to the Orlando area or any of the other spots in the world where Disney does happen to exist, it's a great spot for uh, travel companies to be able to check it out, kind of get inspired for their own, or for people who are like selling vacations, they can learn more about it as well. On Wednesday, we started a new Attractions Magazine column called the Magic Band Release Recap. Now this is really cool because if you're fans of the Magic Bands, it kind of shows you the newest designs that come out, anything that's going to be changing, maybe some of the special effects that Magic Bands do, things like that. Now I've never really been a collector of any like Disney items or really anything like that. I've never really been like the Vinylmations or the pins, I know people are obsessed with those. But I can tell you this, when it comes to the Magic Bands, I'm not a crazy big collector, but I certainly do like getting them. I know I have two executive, like exclusive um, Star Wars ones that work at Hollywood Studios, the 45th anniversary one for the Magic Kingdom, and then when Pandora opened, I got the pass holder one and the opening day one, because, I mean, you guys know I'm obsessed with Pandora anyway. But I really like these Magic Bands, I love how they have all the crazy different designs you can get. Um, and how you're able to scan them. They do the different special effects if you get like a limited edition one and stuff like that. So this is really cool to see. I know I'm going to be definitely keeping up with it and I recommend you do as well if you're interested in the Magic Bands because there's going to be a lot of like what's coming out, what's we're expected to come out, all kind of stuff like that. So a lot of really good information. Secondly, on Wednesday was a brand new video teaser released about Super Nintendo World coming to Universal Studios Japan. Now we know a ton of people are super excited about this, learning about all the new things that are going to be coming to first Japan, and then here to Orlando, and then eventually over to Universal Studios Hollywood. If it's anywhere true to how it looks in this video, I know it's going to be incredible. Obviously, they're going to have colors galore. It's going to be an incredibly bright and like fun-filled park. And it was awesome to see like the music and everything and how Mario's jumping through the land. So the things at least it seems guaranteed that we're definitely going to have is a Bowser's Castle, Peach's Castle, and a bunch of different areas to run around. I saw Toe's House in there as well. So it looks like a really, really awesome, super fun land. I'm hoping that ours here in Orlando is able to come really quick. I know Japan's is supposed to be 2020, if not soon, time around then. So hopefully they get done with that one as soon as possible and it's a big success so they can either start here early as can be or I don't know if they're doing it afterwards. Either way, big, big deal. Fans of Nintendo are absolutely going to love this and I wonder what other hidden gems they have in there that they haven't talked about yet. On Thursday, we spoke about some stuff that's coming from Marvel Studios that will be released at the Disney D23. Now, there's a bunch of different Marvel films coming out soon, and I want to know in the comments, what are you most excited for? Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, or Avengers Infinity War? I am excited for all three. I've seen the trailers for, I mean, obviously uh, Thor and Black Panther. The Avengers Infinity War has not been out yet, but if it's anything like Civil War, I'm going to go crazy. Uh, I just saw the Black Panther trailer today. If you have not seen it, go look it up. It looks so good. A very different style for Marvel. A lot of like hand-to-hand -hand combat, which obviously that happens all the time in the movies, but just the way that they're doing it with like the spears and swords, just, I don't know, feels different and very unique for Marvel. So I really like that. I'm excited to go and see the film. So in your opinion, what of all of these three movies are you the most excited for? Or is there one even farther out in the future that they could be talking about later on that you're more excited about? How do you feel about these three? The second area we spoke about was the Walt Disney Parks and Resorts, A Galaxy of Stories, a Star Wars themed area in the convention during D23. Now this is obviously, as you could guess, is going to be incredibly popular. They said they're going to have a model for Star Wars Land. Perhaps they'll even have the official name there as well. Speak some more about the rides and attractions. 
I'm not sure yet. I just know that it's going to be, obviously, ridiculously popular. Everyone wants to learn more about how Star Wars Land is going to come and become alive at all these parks. We've talked about before on, like, previous episodes and other things posted by attractions is how much they said the immense amount of detail that is coming into these lands. So I'm sure they're going to release a lot of stuff here, talk maybe more about the shops or maybe the meet and greets. I hope the rides... Uh, but it'll be cool to see the model as well, kind of get an in-depth like tour look around. I'm sure we'll have like a video that looks like you're doing like a flyover in a helicopter or something like that. So for you to be able to check it out. But yeah, so Star Wars coming to D23. It's going to be amazing and definitely keep an eye out for all the information we can bring you about that. Moving on to Friday, we were back in Pandora at the Wind Traders, where it looks like some Banshees are back and have flown in. Now, as of right now, they only have blue Banshees for you to be able to adopt, but it still seemed, as you can see here, very, very popular. Now, the only thing I don't like is it seems that they're in such a rush to be able to sell these. I know that the line has been crazy to get them, and I know they're trying to make sure there isn't a line, but they do have, like, a weird table set up in the middle. So I'm not a big fan of that. I loved it so much. I went during one of the um, cast previews, and we got to go in, and it felt very personal and private, and you got to, like, take time and pick out your Banshee, where now it seems like they're on a table, pick your thing, get out of here. I, I just feel like it's taking away from the experience. Now, I didn't wait there to adopt a Banshee or anything, so I don't know if maybe they just do it with the table, but it's just weird for me to see all the boxes just sitting out there, and I hope that's something they can get rid of soon and go back to its original message that they were trying to do with the whole rookery and everything with the Banshees. But either way, as I said, it's still crazy popular. Everyone goes around, and the Banshees are amazing, so as long as people like them and they're paying for them, I guess it's working. Also on Friday, we went to the Foxwire Alpaca Farm, where we got videos of cute little baby alpacas. Nothing crazy about this, just a bunch of little baby alpacas, and I'm sure you're going to love it. So here they are. Flying over to Saturday. Uh, see what I did there? Flying over? Yeah? No? Anyway, Bio Reconstructs, we were able to share some of his photos as he got helicopter shots all over the Disney property, specifically looking at Disney's Hollywood Studios as we see part of Toy Story Land is rising up and changing as it's becoming its full park. As you can see, they're way ahead of schedule, at least in my opinion, uh, for the roller coaster and the like little alien ride. So, I, I don't know, I just didn't expect the roller coaster to be built this fast. It seems weird. I feel like we saw dirt, dirt, nothing, nothing, dirt, nothing, dirt, and that's how it still feels for Star Wars Land. But then I feel like, boom, there's like half a roller coaster is done already. And I don't know about you, but I want to like jump the fence and just ride the coaster. I'll totally be their testers. I don't care. But I just want to go on it because I'm like, well, it looks like it's, it's like, there it is. I feel like you put a show building there, put some like some grass down, and you're ready to go. So I don't know whether they're ahead of schedule or whether that they're just putting that down and they're not even close. Either way, it's looking really good, and we want to thank BioReconstruct for sharing all these shots around the Disney property. Lastly, on Sunday, we talk about the new virtual reality experience coming to Cedar Point. Now, this is the Iron Dragon ride that they have, but this is Iron Dragon VR, where they'll be turning the Iron Dragon roller coaster because it swings back and forth. It'll be kind of like a medieval like village where you get to go through and see ogres, villagers, dragons, and stuff as they're attempting to steal goods from your cart. Because your seat swings back and forth, it'll definitely really add to that and that VR experience. So that's going to be something really cool. How do you feel as, like, as someone yourself who could be going, whether it's to here for the Iron Dragon VR experience or eventually to the updated Kraken when it's SeaWorld? Um, do you like it? Do you want the option to like not wear the helmet? Do you want to always wear the helmet? How does it feel to you? Are you excited about how they're changing this or do you think parks should stick to just making new attractions themselves? Tell us how you think. I know it's, I, I'm for VR. Um, I love being able to check it out myself. Obviously not every single time. Sometimes it's cool just to see how great the views are from the coaster. But at least at Cedar Point, you definitely have Top Thrill Dragster or Millennium Force to be able to check out if you really want a high up view. So this is definitely going to be a different experience that I'm sure a lot of people are going to enjoy. And it's available just for this summer if anyone would like to go and see. And that is it for this episode of The Weekly Rewind, presented by Attractions Magazine. As I was saying before, how do you feel about these new Marvel films coming out? Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, or Avengers Infinity War? What are you most excited about? Do you care about the films? Do you not care? You're going to rush to see all three? What is it you'd like to hear from D23 about these upcoming films? I'd love to know in the comments, and thank you so much. I hope you guys have an incredible week.